Hi everybody, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We knocked out that filler that knocks out three breaks. So first we're going to do Chronicles, and then if you're watching live, the next two videos will be those optic uh, cron contenders optic basketball breaks. But this is 2020-2021 Panini Chronicles basketball, six box, pick your team number six. Second half of the case that we popped open last night. There you go. So on December 2nd, thank you very much everybody for spending a bit of your Thursday with us. So if you see a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won those spots. In fact, for example, for Patrick, he won a spot into the filler to win a spot. So nice little, nice little parlay there. And I think Serenity ended up with Last Spot Mojo with Dallas. So thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. No matter how you got in, whether you bought spots or you bought fillers to get into the fillers, to get into the spots, no matter how you did it, I appreciate it. All right, now remember last night, we, uh, we marked these with six, so we know they're all from the same case. And away we go. Good luck. Joe Christian talking a little fanatics here. Yeah, I, that seems to be, I can't really say for sure. Obviously, I don't know either way. But it seems to be that the speculation is that once fanatics, once push comes to shove, fanatics will end up attempting to buy some of the major manufacturers to, uh, some of the major manufacturers. And yeah, and then let them operate the way they, they normally would. Is the hope, I think. But everything's good now, Rex. Rex was having some buffering issues. But everything seems to be good now. All right, there's Emmanuel Quickly, 85 out of 149. LeBron and CJ Elby, 20 out of, 10 out of 99. Limited jersey and autograph for Portland. And that's going to go to Roy, who won that spot. Maybe YouTube hiccuped or something like that. Or maybe our internet hicked up, hiccuped. There's Chris Middleton to 149. There it goes this way, 86 out of 149. Uh, Middleton is going to go to Sean Maddock in Milwaukee. James Wiseman to 49. Nice James Wiseman for the Warriors. That'll be for Jared. And we got a Monty Morris autograph. Rookies and Stars Airborne Auto for Denver. That'll be for Ryan Kaysen. And LaMelo Ball for uh, for Kevin and Charlotte. Why, hold on, Joe P., why wouldn't you want Fanatics to do that? Otherwise, Tops and Panini don't have any license, any players union licensing. They're, they're essentially a bit neutered. They wouldn't really, really be able to do anything. Forty-seven out of one forty-nine. Chris Paul, Joe, you know what their plans are for the hobby. Michael Hughes, Phoenix Suns, and we got a nice XR Lamelo Ball. We 
got more Lamella. All these add up, Kevin. And there's an Anthony Edwards. But how? What do you, I mean? What do you think Fanatics is going to do? That's going to that's going to hurt the hobby. I mean, I I think people just say that because they're just anti-change, <laughs> and they're just like, all change is bad. The hobby, especially, has been traditionally like that. I mean, people people thought Panini getting into the uh, getting into the business was bad. haven't discussed this in depth with uh, with Mike Jaspers and the boss man Nick's dad here but he has he has a couple friends that are that are uh, kind of high up in fanatics that he's been in been friends with over the decades that he's been in the industry and from the conversations they've had the come from the conversations they've had um, overall Mike walked away feeling good about it and he's ha he's got more experience in the hobby than any of us. So I mean there's there're going to be changes in that and we just we don't we just don't know what's going to happen there but There's Sadiq Bay to 49. There's Devin Vassell to 99. RJ Hampton. There's Precious Achua to 149. And Cassius Winston. No, it's not, but that's been on that's been what Tops and Panini have been trying to do for ages. It's really going to hurt the distributors more than than the consumers, I think. Is my guess. I mean, hopefully they can still get I mean, I feel bad for the distributors because I think they're going to be the ones that are kind of kind of pushed out. But they're going to they're going to respect the 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 hobby, the consumer level hobby shop. 31 out of 149. John Wall. But I think as Joe Christian was saying, right, companies buy companies all the time. As long as they're making money, yeah, they're not they don't they don't want to they don't want to disrupt and they don't want to disrupt, you know, what's what's been a bit of a golden goose, you know what I mean? There's LaMelo Ball, Charlotte Sixty-seven out of ninety-nine, James Weissman and Isaiah Thomas. Twenty-one out of one
I think that's going to be a big part of it, but I think the... I think the the I think Joe Joe is right. So I, I think you know, and I don't know anything exactly. So this is not on the record or anything like that. But but yes, they they are they want to improve the retail buying experience. Joe P, I think that's what you're reading. They want to buy. They want to improve that retail buying experience. But you know, hobby shops and the the large scale breakers are still going to be a big part of their plans. But selling retail, like Rex was talking about buying Chronicles boxes at, 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 at Walmart or whatever, that's been a mess over the years. You know, like being able to sell it and, and the secondary market going unchecked and all that sort of stuff, it's been a mess. I think they're trying to fix that and improve that retail experience. And a lot of it is going to be some like direct stuff to straight to the customer, which Panini has already started doing with first off the line stuff. There's a Najee Marshall. But I mean, the, 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 the hobby shop and especially large scale breakers now, I think are going to be still an important part of their plans. Here's another Lamello ball. At least that's the buzz I'm hearing, you know, and a lot and a lot of conversations with fanatics as well. Is the buzz? Nothing official. There's Jonas Valanciunas, 67 out of 99. Breakers maybe, but not the local car. The local car shop will be fine. There's Obi Top into 149. Local car shops who are smart, I think will be fine. And there's Damian Lillard. All right, three boxes to go. Well, Joe P, we're, we actually run a local car shop here, so we're, the sky's not falling for us. Let's put, let's put it that way. We're, we're in this day-to-day, -day, man. We'll be fine. Dave Cohen's old Celtic 43 out of 99. More LaMelo ball. All these add up, Kevin. And we've got an Anthony Edwards, Threads Anthony Edwards. <laughs> well, 
people would argue that the average Joe can't afford to buy buy stuff in the hobby now. So how is that how is that going to change? I don't think it's going to change too much. I mean the way the way things happen on the I think for for you and me for for the breakers to the or the shop to the consumer. I don't think I don't think a lot is going to change. I think a lot of stuff behind the scenes will will be different. There's a manual quickly. I'm sure pricing on some stuff will inevitably change, but prices go up all the time. I mean, pe people said it was crazy when they looked at the prices for 1819 prison basketball, and then people said when it when the price went up again in 1920 prison basketball people said that was insane you know but but the hobby has been able to absorb that and then when i mean it's econo i mean it's it's economics you know if the price gets too high and people stop buying guess what prices will go down There's a Jameis Ramsey for the Kings. You think it'll be 10 times worse than they take over? 10 times is a lot. I don't think so. I think that's wrong. Kings, that's for Ryan Harold. But hey, if it does get 10 times worse and it works, then they'll be making a lot of profit. If it doesn't work, guess what? They'll lower prices. That's economics. I'm not super, I'm not super concerned about that. I mean, last I checked, they're a, they're a for-profit business. And once <laughs> they're starting to lose profits, they'll, they'll adjust what they need to adjust to make profits again. It's any of Egypt 149. Yeah, but I mean, listen. Even even without knowing what what we know from fanatics, I'm just that's just so like illogical, Joe P. Why would they Why would they just arbitrarily raise prices ten times, right? To lose to ruin the value of secondary market stuff, which they know is important, and and lose the hobby like why how does that make sense because if people aren't buying at that price point they're shooting themselves in the foot the fanatics isn't just uh you know fanatics isn't like they're not sitting here going boy how do we kill this golden goose like logically even if we don't know any logically it just doesn't make sense they're going to they're going to spend all these millions of dollars in licensing for trading cards and then just blow it. You know, it's not like some mom and pop like stumbling into the license for for the NFL, you know, or privately held privately held companies or anything like that. There's Isaac Okoro, 54 out of 99. Trying to corner the market is bad for the hobby? Is it though? People said the same thing when Panini was gobbling up licenses and year over year, I think for a lot of, uh, for a lot of the hobby, it's been, it's been good business. There's Trey Jones, 38 out of 41.
But how can you make it a? They want to make it a trillion dollar industry. But how do you make that trillion dollar industry if you're if you're making it if you're making it difficult for people to buy? People don't buy. They're not going to make it a trillion dollar industry. So if the prices are too high to make it a trillion dollar industry, wouldn't it, wouldn't it make sense for them to make prices more competitive to make it a trillion dollar industry? Three out of ten, Tayshawn Alexander. It'll be a rich man's hobby, but people will say that now, Joe. So what's what's it going to be? Is it how does that change anything? People say it's a rich man's hobby now. People talk about it. They wish it was the nineties. You know, so so I don't know. That argument doesn't really work. It's already not a hobby for anyone else. That's what a lot. That's what. How is it going to change with fanatics? It's not going to get any worse. So, I mean, with that argument, it doesn't really make sense because that's what people are saying already right now. It's Anthony, uh, Anthony Edwards, hometown heroes. Here's a James Harden silver. And there's Zion Williamson to 149. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say, it's hard to have it really both ways to have a hobby that could that could be for everybody. You know, and still try to get everybody involved, but still have it be valuable. It's, it's going to be a tough challenge for sure. My understanding is that is that they want to make the retail, the Walmart, Target, you know, retail side of things, improve that a lot more greatly. And then, and that will give people better exposure to the hobby and then lead them towards stuff like higher end stuff, hobby boxes and stuff like that. <laughs> I was like wondering why that must that's a typo guys. Don't freak out. <laughs> it's James Harden. There's Kendrick Nunn. Heat edition has not really played done much for the Lakers yet. Still been injured, Jordan Ashton. I mean, listen, Joe P. I, I understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, to put it bluntly, prices have been going up already, and people have have still purchased. You know what I mean? Like, so it's the market can, for now, the market can sustain it. You know what I mean? There's Anthony Edwards, Stephen K with the Timberwolves. We'll get all those Anthony Edwards is is is. So like, it's difficult for me to to logically go down the road of it's going to be ten times worse with fanatics. I mean, for most average Joes already, they're already saying. It's a rich man's hobby. I've been priced out. You know, it, which is something that we hear often. It's something that we hear often. So it's, it's already not good for most people. But I think they're going to figure I think they're going to make at least an effort to figure figure that out. I mean, if you take the global population, there's only still a small percentage of the global population that actually knows that this stuff exists. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Maybe maybe that 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 broader exposure will be better. Is there Aaron Naismith ninety nine? Both next, but I feel I feel like I don't know. I feel like Joe. People would still argue that. 
you know, that the smaller middle class is already priced out of the hobby. For the Magic, that's Kareem Mane, 43 out of 99. Hometown heroes for the Orlando Magic. That'll be for Diego. There's a LeBron Luminance to 149. Devin Booker, Tyrese. And we're going to close out with... I'm going to close out with Jay Sean Tate. To 149. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, if uh, I think we're Jaspies as as us, I mean, we can only really speak for ourselves. We feel pretty bullish about the hobby, you know, and I th I think we're looking forward to seeing how all the changes work out for the hobby. So. We're going to ride with it and roll with it, and hopefully you'll support us through uh, any changes that happens in the hobby and elsewhere in life. So thanks for uh, breaking with us. Jaspie's case, right? See, group break is still the best value out there, ladies and gentlemen, because you're not having to shoulder the whole price of a box. I'm Joe for jaspiescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.